I have one point for you today. And I think it's a prophetic word for the body of Christ in America, for each of us individually. And the word is this. In a moment in time when there's more fighting, more division than ever, when there are more things fighting for our attention, trying to distract us, don't let the fight distract you from the work. See, Sambalan and Tobiah knew that they didn't have enough people to actually defeat the Jews in combat. That's why when the Jews went on alert and knew that they were coming and they lost the element of surprise, they just gave up. If they thought they had a chance, if they thought it was 50-50, if they thought that they had an opportunity, they would have, they would have fought. They would have attacked. But they didn't. They knew it. Immediately, they ran away. Because they knew what the enemy knows. See, the victory for the enemy is not in defeating the people of God in combat. The, the one who's in us is greater than anything in the world. Anyone, anything, spiritual, physical, whatever you name it, mental, emotional, the one who lives in you. I wish we got a concept of who actually lives in us. One of the great phrases in Christianity that I think has created some of the worst theology out there today is this idea that it's important to know who you are in Christ. <laughs> Just went quiet. 98% of you have said this. You're like, what is he about to say? This idea that it's important to know who I am in Christ. And there is a, a bit of truth to that, but actually that's not what Paul teaches. See, he doesn't say who I am in Christ is the hope of glory. He says Christ in you is the hope of glory. See, Jesus is not the house that I live in. I am the house that Jesus lives in. Jesus is not the car that I drive. I am the car that he drives. I am the vessel. He is the master. It's not important that I figure out who I am in Christ. What I need to discover is who Christ is in me. Yeah. Colossians 3 puts it this way. He says, set your mind on things above where Christ is. And then he goes on to say, because your real life, he doesn't say your life, your real life is hidden in Christ. But get this, watch this. It's like a, like a caterpillar becoming a cocoon and emerging the other side of the butterfly. He says, your real life is hidden in Christ so that when Christ, who is your life, is revealed. Now, I want you to catch that. Catch that subtle shift there. Your real life gets hidden in Christ, but it emerges. It's not supposed to stay in Christ. When it emerges, Christ is supposed to be your life. He, your, your life Ceases to be your life in him and it becomes his life in you. You always know when you come out on the other side of transformation. When you cease to make decisions and think of your life in terms of who I am in Christ. As long as it's about who I am in Christ, I'm going to think that I have veto power. And a lot of us exercise veto power. A lot of us sign a lot of executive orders telling, telling Jesus, nah, not today. I want you to give that word to that coworker, eh, Vito. <laughs> then we come on Sunday, all I need is you, no one else, nothing else. But see, when it's Christ living in you, I don't Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live. Listen to that language. We are teaching this Christianity where I can progressively die over the course of 90 years. And hopefully when I die, I'll be the least alive that I've ever been. But he says, no, no. 
No, no. Part of the condition of coming to know Christ and calling yourself a follower of Jesus is to lay down your life from the jump. The execution takes time. But the decision is immediate. I don't progressively decide to follow Jesus. Put it down. Now, every day I wake up, my standard is Christ. And where I don't live up to it, and look, I don't have a single day that I live completely up to it. His grace is sufficient for me. But just because his grace is sufficient doesn't mean that Christ is not my standard. When we get a clue of who Christ is in us, that's the worst thing the enemy could ever hear. Because the minute you, you realize that Christ lives in you, God himself, the creator, the one who spoke the worlds into existence, lives inside of you. And everything he says is true, not because he can't lie, but because God can't lie. You're like, what does that mean? It, it doesn't, God, when we say God can't lie, it's not because lying is a sin and if God lied, it'd be a sin. No, no. God's not bound by the law. God, God is the law. If I look at this basket and I say that's a car, I'm lying. Because it's a basket, not a car. But if God comes and says, that's a car, he's not lying because it would cease to be a basket and that basket would conform to his word and become a car. God can't lie. Everything comes out of his mouth, comes true. When you realize that Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is not junior God, by the way. We elevate the Father, we elevate Jesus. We act like Holy Spirit is like junior God. He's like demigod. He's like Hercules. He's like half God, half human. He's like half God, half wind. I don't know what we think he is, but we don't really think he's really God like Jesus. We're always calling for Jesus to come. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, chilling, got his leg up with the remote control watching us, and he's like, yo, dude, I did what I said I was going to do, and now my spirit lives in you, Holy Spirit. Why are you asking me to come down from the throne room of heaven? Like, I died for you. I put off omnipotence, omniscience. I put off all that stuff so that I could be contained in a body. I died. I don't know if you know how hard it is for God to die. Like, I, God is life. If you ever, And I did that for you, and I stayed dead for three days, and I beat death, hell, and the grave, and I came back, and I, I made all of you a dwelling place for God in his spirit. What more you want me to do? <laughs> did I not say on the cross it is finished? Did it, does it my ears deceive me? Did I, I remember saying it is finished. Did you remember me saying it is finished? I'm pretty sure it's written in all the gospels. Like, like Jesus, come save America. I did. Jesus, save my family. I did. Jesus, save my coworkers. I did. Save my state. Save my governor. I did. Well, why, ain't they, why, why haven't they come to know Christ yet? Why ain't my coworkers, they got such bad attitudes. Why haven't they changed yet? Because you ain't said nothing. <laughs> Holy Spirit been trying to say stuff through you. 